Yo, Sean, what is it? I said astigmatism in my soul. Yo, Rick, do me a favor, kid. Tell the people this is a stigmatism in my soul TV. This is a stigma in my soul TV. Not the TV that tells lies to your vision. Not the TV that tells lies. But the TV that tells the truth to your vision. But the TV that tells the truth to your vision. You need it. This is the real Rick Ross. Not that other one. This is the real one. Peace. Moses, me, I'm going to interview my brother Sean today, and uh, I would like for you to share with us to the world and our people and everybody out there your story, Sean. Uh, if you don't mind, I would like to ask you, you know, if you can introduce yourself, where you from, where you were born, how old you are, and etc. My name is Sean Gumby. Check out my YouTube channel, Gumby Publishing. I was born in Passaic, New Jersey, Beth Israel Hospital, raised in Clifton, New Jersey, and I'm 50 years old. Now you from the East Coast. All day. Today he's visiting the West Coast. It's all love from both coasts. Now if you could share with me, how was it when you were a child? Uh, if you can give us a little bit about how you grew up. How was it when you were a baby? Did you grow up with your parents? Were they in your lives, or how, how to start off when you were a baby, man, if, if you know, or? My memory, Moses, goes back. I was raised by a single mother, single black mother uh, in Jersey. Um, it was, um, it was a lot of, I, I had a good, I had a good childhood. I had a good childhood. Um, a lot of domestic violence in the house. Okay. Um, you know, I, I I don't know. My mother, she told so many lies about her life, her past. Right. And it was later found out in my life later on um, that some lies were told to me about who my father was. And I heard different shit from different family members. So I like, kind of never really knew. So, like, you know, the nigga that was... The, you know, that was supposedly my father, and I don't really know. I can't say 100% that I really know. Um, you know, it was a lot of domestic violence in the house, and, right. uh, you know, he didn't spend much time with me, and, and uh, you know, that was it. But it was cool, though. You know, my mom was cool. She did what she can. I was raised as the only child, and, uh, no you know. brothers or sisters, huh? I got brothers, but they weren't raised with me. They were raised down south by my grandmother. Okay. Um, for whatever reason, you know, she left them down south, and she kept me in New Jersey. Okay. Quick question: majority of majority of your family, where are they at? In down south in Georgia. Okay. In okay. South Carolina. But you grew up in New Jersey. I grew up in Jersey. Okay. North Jersey. Um. Have you ever met your biological father? Like I say, man. The nigga that I was told was my father, right. I have doubts as to whether he is or he isn't for various reasons for how he treated me right. or didn't treat me. And then there were always rumors about somebody else being my father and my mother could never give me a straight answer. Right. You understand as to whatever, you know, and so I I, I I don't really know, man. We'll, we'll leave it right there. Um, how was it in elementary school? How was how how? What, if you can give us an example of what kind of kid you were during elementary and uh, kindergarten and you know just growing up, were you a good kid, bad kid? Were you were you were you uh, uh, an A 
student? Were you a learner? Were you a troublemaker? Yeah. I was all that, man. I was all, all that. I was all that, man. I was all that. I went to school. I was raised in Clifton, New Jersey, which was probably about a 90% white town mm. um, back in the 70s. And I was most of the time the only nigga in the class, the only black in the class. How, how was that? How did that feel? That was um, when, you, when you're in kindergarten up to sixth grade. You don't really know because right. at that point, kids just want to play. You another right. motherfucking kid, nigga. Let's just play. But once I went to junior high school, then I started to see the differences. You understand? You know, and getting called nigga and spook and porch monkey and shit and all of that, going right. through all of that. Uh, Was it very racial? Absolutely, absolutely, mm. absolutely. Um, but I was academically, I was money. I was money. I was always elementary school. I won all the spelling bees, all the math bees. My report card was straight A's, but my behavior was always fucked up. And I think a lot of that stemmed from the broken situation at home with all the, you know, my mother was a, a functional alcoholic at the time. Mm. And like I say, the nigga who, you know, is my father or not, you know, he was getting high and shit. So it was a lot of violence. So that that was a traumatic experience, and I, you know, my behavior was fucked up. You understand? But right. academically, as far as books and any of that, man, nigga was money, man. Okay. How were your teenage years? How how'd you grow up? Like, how was it being a teenager, coming from where you come from? I mean, if you can explain a little bit about that. Well, man. my teenage years. How was that for you? I started smoking weed going into the seventh and, and grade. And this is what the seventies or eighties or. I was born in 69, so I turned 13 in 82, mm. right? So I, I started smoking weed going into the seventh grade. And, you know, my grades started to drop off. You know, my behavior got worse. You know, juvenile court, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that, suspended from school. Were you ever in juvenile hall or anything like that? Never, never went to juvenile hall. Got close to going to Jamesburg, though. If anybody from Jersey, you know about Jamesburg. I was, I stayed in court in Patterson with Judge Ferranti. Um, but I never, I never went. My mother, she, you know, she, um, my mother was a nurse and she was, you know, I guess we were considered a like middle class black family. Right. Um, so she, she would use her resources to get me lawyers and shit to try to keep me out of that situation. Mm. Um, but my teenage years, man, was a lot of drug use, man, and getting drunk and shit and just, like, juvenile delinquency shit, okay. man. I was athletic, though. Nigga was played athletic. Some sports or what? Oh, yeah, nigga. I wrestled in high school. I played lacrosse. Okay. Um, I was mean at baseball all through Little League. I was mean at all sports until I started smoking weed, and then it just, like, took away my drive for anything, man, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to just, you know, I wanted to hang out with the wrong crowd, and we spoke about that earlier, man. Right. Speaking of high school, around the time you, 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 you're getting there to, to 18 years old, getting to be uh, as, as legally as an adult, I mean, how was that? How were your high school years around that time of your life, that age? I mean, what was going through your mind? I mean, we, we, like, what were you thinking, if you don't mind me asking at that time? Like, what was going through your mind, like, you know? High school Moses, I was, I was, um, I was fucked up. I was smoking dust, tripping off mescaline, smoking weed. Um, but I was, I was money with the books. I was money on academically. Um, I had quit all sports. The drugs had took all of my motivation to do any type of thing athletically. I began to quit things. My attitude got fucked up. Um, but my mother, she persisted to continually tell me, nigga, you going to college. You going to Morris Brown down in Atlanta. You going to college. You right. understand? And I used to be like, all right, whatever, you know, whatever. Right. And, and um, but like, at so, dur during this, go ahead, I, I'm sorry. So it seems to me, and I could just tell by talking to you, the conversations we've had, that you've always been in your education, man. And I could just tell just by speaking to you, man. So I commend you for that. Thank you, man. For real, because it's, it's come ways. And uh, I can just, again, you, you, you're giving me game. 
So I, I want to thank you for that too. Yeah, man. But uh, so after high school and all that, we um, did you graduate? Graduated high school in 1987 in June, and 60 days later, August 1987, my mother had me enrolled in Morris Brown College in Atlanta, Georgia, historically black college in Atlanta, and I was in school. And she dropped me off, we, she put me in the dorm, and she gave me $400 in my account, Okay. and she told me, I'll see you later. And she jumped on the highway and drove back to Jersey, Just took off, and huh? left me there with $400. I didn't even know how to wash clothes. One of the best things she ever did for me. How was that? I mean, how was... Since she did all that, I mean, what... How was college? I mean, what... I mean, was it just like a blind side? I mean, is that something you always want to do? Or was it... it was, was it just strictly your mom that drilled it into you? Or it was, was her. It, or was it a little bit apart? It was all her then? It, was, it wasn't nothing with me. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Hmm coming out of high school at 18 what do you know what you're doing you think you know everything but you don't know a goddamn thing right i ended up in atlanta at morris brown it was a historically black college so you left new jersey and went to atlanta right at 18 and how long were you in college how long were you in atlanta for i got to atlanta august 1987 and then i graduated june 19 june 1993 i was there Six years of school, it took me six years to graduate. I got, my drug addiction took off. My drug addiction took off with sniffing coke and smoking crack, um, to eventually dropping out of college, yeah. quitting. My addiction, you know, beat me into submission. Um, so and you, I you dropped out of college. Dropped right? out of college, man. Okay. Um, after my, after my, I went three semesters and dropped out. I was on a roll every semester. Even while I used to drink a 40 and smoke weed every day, and still was making an honor roll. Mm. But it, eventually the addiction just took over and I ended up quitting and uh, going to rehab. I stayed and went to a 28 day program, finished that. And then I started to go to uh, meetings and shit and I stayed clean and I'm still clean to this day. I've been clean today, 28 years, 10 months and 23 days in a row. That's right. Congratulations, yeah. man. I mean, that shit, coming from where we come from, that's that's a blessing and uh, an accomplishment, man. And I know it's a very tough thing, especially through hard times. And some people can't handle it, man. They end up giving in or folding. But uh, I commend you for that also, man. Appreciate you. So you dropped out of college. I mean, what happened after that? Did you end up going back? What? Yeah, man. I was I mean, fucked up, nigga. I was fucked up man i was fucked up off of drugs oh man? man i was broken kid i yeah. was 20 i was 21 i was i got clean 1990 so i'm 21 years old 69 i'm 20 i'm 21 years old and i'm saying sean what the fuck happened to you I mean, look at you man and so was that like a like a breaking point like a, a part of you moment in your life you're like damn you kind of smelled the coffee like yeah man mm -hmm. yeah man yeah because I, I i was i was at that point i was you know i was doing things that was putting my life in jeopardy right you understand right and um you know i i made the decision well the drugs beat me to submission man it made me quit man and ask for help that was the hardest part Cause like my ego and shit didn't want me to let a motherfucker know that I was fucked up and ask a nigga for help. But it wasn't until I asked for help that I got help, man. So that around that time, you, were, you say you were 21? I was 21 years old. After that, me. through your mid-20s, what was going on with you? I mean, like... I got clean. I went back to school. Made the best grades I ever made. I wasn't okay. drinking and getting high no so more. So you went back even harder. I went back even harder because my mind was clean. My, my, my dome piece was clean. But now we're talking about the early 90s, so the drug selling game is heavy at this time. So I get involved in that. Okay. I get involved in selling drugs. Why? The money. Okay. And the wanting to be down. Easy money, huh? Easy money, wanting to be down. It was the thing to do. You know, and I just got involved in it, man. And then I got fucked up with a case in Atlanta. Almost ended up going to prison in Georgia. Okay. 
you know, my mother uh, got in touch with this high power lawyer, ended up getting out of that. You understand? I ain't never ratted ever in my life. None of my cases. My Fed case, nor this case in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Nigga straight up and down like six o'clock. And um, I got involved in the drug thing, almost got killed in that a few times. So your mom always looked out with the lawyer. She was always yeah. there, man. She was always there, man. That's she right. saved the nigga, man. That's right. She saved the nigga, man. So after that case, you beat it or whatever, or got dismissed? No, I didn't beat it. I didn't beat it. I got. I pled guilty to possession of, with intent to distribute a control, controlled substance. And I ended up having to... Um, was that your first case as an adult? That ever? was my first case as an adult. It was in Fulton County Jail in Atlanta. And this was my senior year of getting ready to graduate to get my degree. I get knocked. And the judge, the nigga looked me out. And he said, well, nigga, I'm going to let you finish school. But you got to go to jail. You got to come to jail every year for three years. For 30 days, you got to sit in Fulton County Jail for the next three years. I said, run it. And then that's, that was my sentence. So you you hit the county jail? Yeah. Man. How was that like? That was the first time ever in jail, huh? Yeah, I mean, I had been in like, you know, bullpens and shit like that from right. getting pulled over, right. DUIs like that. But this was the first county jail situation I got in where I couldn't get a bond, where I had to serve, sit down oh, and serve so you time. Got, you got a straight time. Yeah, Fulton County Jail, man. It, how, was it, that, how was that experience? That Fulton County Jail, them niggas, they was, they was the Thunderdome, man. Mm. I was a the Thunderdome, them niggas, and they was fighting every day, man, so on Rice Street. So you just right there just surviving, huh? I just, you know what I'm saying? I just mind my business and shut the fuck up and, you know, just mind my business, well, man. you got through it, though. That's I'm sitting here. Right? Um, after that, what happened? I mean, what? What'd you do after that? I mean... I got out of that situation. Did you end up graduating? Went college? back to school, graduated, got my degree in there accounting. Go. I got the accounting degree. Then I moved back to Jersey. Um... And I went back to the golf course caddying and working other jobs. And um, I got this job in the corporate world with a criminal background. I was caddying at a golf course and one of the members of the club, he owned the placement agency for accountants. I had the accounting degree. He got me a job in his company. He told, what's up man? He told them everything about my situation. They hired me and I ended up using that corporate job to earn my master's degree with the tuition reimbursement through them. Okay. And uh, yeah. After that, uh, I know eventually, now did you have your son first or did you go to, to federal penitentiary first? Which one was first, if you don't mind me asking? My son, the feds came to my office April. You have one child. Right? I got one son, Sean Xavier Gumby Jr. That's my son. Shout out to Lil Sean. Yeah, shout out to my son. The feds came to my office April 14, 2011. Sean wasn't even born yet. He was born 40 days later. Okay. In May. And what was supposed to be a happy event in my life was clouded with a federal investigation. So it was like fucking doom and gloom. And I had this child. It was fuck. It was it was it was rough. Before we get to your son, real quick, how did that federal investigation even become possible or came to life? Like, how did that happen? I well, mean, I got. I had. Um, I was a licensed real estate broker. Okay. Now, real estate is your thing, from what you tell That's me. That's what the fuck I do. Okay. I was a licensed real estate broker. I had a consulting business. I had a property management business, all legitimate businesses, LLCs with EIN numbers, straight up and down. I had my own office and the whole shit, and I was doing it wrong. I was getting, I was getting people back bigger refunds on their taxes than what I was supposed to. I was doing wrong, and somehow I don't know what the fuck happened. You know what I'm saying? I can't really know. I, I some motherfuckers probably told on me. You understand? Okay. But that don't matter. It was still my fault because I put my possess, I put myself in a position to get told on. Right. And the feds ran down on me, investigated me, indicted me, I pled guilty, and ended up going to uh, to the feds for 15 months, 15 days, 19 hours, Morgantown, West Virginia. How was that experience? 
I was at being in the federal penitentiary did your time I mean if well you, if you could explain if you could just touch quick bases on to the people I'm sure that just would like to know how it was to be into in a federal penitentiary like I mean how was it both with the bad and good was there any good at all in it or was there anything you learned or was it strictly just pure bad and evilness or what, what is your thoughts on that of that time of your life you were in there FCI Morgantown there's a minimum security low okay so it ain't no USP it ain't no medium high it's a minimum security low but it is the Fed it was the FCI um when I got there I had to self surrender so I flew one class one way flight to prison I was a broken man I had lost the $1.2 million net worth. I had $931,000 cash. I had fucked up mm. myself. I had eight rental properties that went into foreclosure. My house in Jersey City went into foreclosure. Everybody who I thought loved me, betrayed me, turned against me. The only one that fucked with me was my son. But I got to when I got to Morgantown, I was so broken, Moses that it was actually a place, and I met some dudes, and I met some wizards in there, some geniuses, man, who helped put me back together, along with myself, man. And it actually was what I needed, man. I needed to be removed, because there was so much negativity in Jersey surrounding me and the people around me. And when they sent me to West Virginia, I was like, man, why the fuck they sending me way the fuck out there? But it was the best thing for me, man. And and that was where I got right, man. Mm. That was where I got right, man. In the feds, man. Physically, mentally, spiritually, everything, man. So in other words, you came out just a better man. Ready, I'm sure, hungry. Listen, man. That shit didn't do nothing but make me motherfucking 11 times better than what Let's I go. was, man. Let's go. You understand? Back to, I, back, I'm sorry to cut you off. Back to your son real quick. I mean... How was that having your son? I'm sure he's gonna watch this video. Is there anything you'd like to tell him real quick? Nigga saved my life, man. Moses, I was in a goddamn depression so deep. Cause they investigated me for three and a half years before I went to the joint. And like I say, I blew $1.2 million net worth. And I was in a depression so deep that I didn't think I was gonna come out. And here's this little boy, my son, he got my name. He used to tell me, he used to say, out of the blue, Daddy, I love you. And I used to be like, why? Because I don't even love me no more. And he got me through. He was the only nigga that went to court with me, man, doing sentencing, man. Nobody else came, offered to come. So after that, how did this whole YouTube thing come apart, man? How how the YouTube journey, how, how has it, how did it start? I wrote these books, man. I wrote this book, Stigmatism in My Soul. Y'all go on my website, gumbypublishing.bigcartel.com, get my book. I wrote this book, and the way to promote the book, because I never was no social media nigga, because, you know, you doing fucked up shit, you don't want to be on social media. And one of the ways I promoted the book was I did a YouTube video, man. What are the positives and the negatives you have gotten from YouTube so far? We'll start with positives. Man, YouTube gives me the chance to define who I am. You understand? America can't define me as, oh, you a black American male, you a convicted felon, you a recovering drug addict, you a piece of shit. You don't fucking tell me who I am. I tell my story and my YouTube channel affords me the ability to define who I am and tell my story and I help people, man. If there's one thing you could tell a young man coming up just trying to find himself, young man or woman, there's one thing you could tell him. What would you tell him? Just trying to make it in this world. Just trying to survive. Man, dance to your own music. Mm. Dance to your own music, man. Because every we all guessing. And stay true to yourself. Be authentic and be genuine. Businessly speaking... Is there anything in the future you, like, where do you see yourself in five years?
businessly speaking with your clothing brand, your books, your YouTube, everything. Where do you see yourself for the next five years? Man, Moses, man, come on, man. You know what the fuck it is, man, nigga. I lost 1.2 million. I'm getting that back and some, nigga. Let's get it. I'm getting that back and some. I'm, I'm going to be sitting on about three or four mil, man. Easy, man. Get back in the real estate game. You understand? And just lay low and raise my son, man. That's it. I don't want no problems. I don't want no, don't bother me. I ain't going to bother you. If, if you could tell a convicted felon someone like us with the background is just getting out, what would you tell them? Believe in yourself and don't let society define you. Don't let them get in your brain and stamp you with that scarlet letter that you a piece of shit because you a convicted felon. You you shake that off, you put your helmet on, let that shit bounce off of your head. You don't let that come in and you define you. What do you feel about education, period? Man, nigga, you got to read, man. You got to... You got to you gotta self-reach your education. You ain't got to go to no college and come out with $180,000 worth of debt you can't pay off for a degree. You can go to public library and read books and do what you passionate about. Don't do what nobody else wants you to do. Do what you passionate about. Live your life. Dance to your own music. Now that you're here, visiting here in California, which I appreciate a lot, you want to know, how do you feel, Sean, like, what, what, what are your feelings? Where are you, what, what's your mind at? How do you feel? I mean, just with everything that has happened so far in your life, what's on your mind? Talk Moses, to me. Moses, I'm 50 years old, man. I feel better than I've ever felt my whole life. I'm physically fit. I'm mentally steeled. I'm spiritually sound. I'm a professional black father. I'm out here, I flew out here to California, to the West Coast, to meet up with another YouTuber to help promote my channel. I eat clean, I get good sleep, I ain't got no problems, I ain't got no pending court cases other than a little child support. I got a good life, man. I got the dope life, man. If you, well, so, well, I have two more questions, real quick. If you were, if you can tell somebody that's just feel like their 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 situation's really bad, they feel like giving up, they feel like committing suicide, whatever. If you can tell them one thing, what would that be? Man, just go one more day, man. You're not by yourself, man. You're not by yourself. You're not by yourself, and go one more day. With all this being said, is there anything you would like to say to the world, to everybody in this world, both good and evil? Is there any message you would like to be put out there? I mean, even to your son, to family, whoever, it don't matter. Is there anything you would like to share? Man, always be yourself, man. Don't run from yourself. Stay true to yourself. The words that come out your mouth got to mean something. Be authentic. Be your authentic self. Be your genuine self. That's what creates balance in the universe. When you be who you are and I be who I am, the universe is in balance. But if you copying a motherfucker and I'm copying a motherfucker, we ain't... The shit is off. Stay close to the center. Always be yourself, man. Irrespective of whether people accept you or not, you accept yourself. Well said, Sean. Um, I want to thank you for the day. I want to thank you for coming out. Thank you, man. And uh, shout out to Moses Quavos, man. Uh, if you can give everybody your your name again, your YouTube channel, all that, your information, because this is going worldwide, baby. Man, listen, the YouTube channel is Gumby Publishing. Facebook is Sean Gumby S E A N last name G U N B Y. Instagram Gumby Publishing. Shout out to everybody, man. I love everybody, man. We all somebody, man. You somebody. You are somebody, man. And you, it's your responsibility to tell yourself that every day. It's your responsibility to have confidence in yourself every day. It's your responsibility to believe in yourself every day. And you don't let nobody take that from you, man. You don't let nobody take your vibration. Your vibration is yours and it's yours to keep. And you control it. The higher the vibration, the higher the position in the scale. The lower the vibration, the lower the position in the scale. Always believe in yourself. 
Well said. I want to thank you, Sean, for everything. Thank you, Much kid. Much love. If you ever need anything, I'm here for you. Thank you, kid. We'll talk. Appreciate you, All kid. All right, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Peace.